So I'm going to do a quick tutorial around uh, opening a GIF, existing GIF in Photoshop and doing some edits to its timing or the sequencing of the frames. And all what's cool about it is you'll also see uh, all the individual frames, uh, what they look like. So we're just going to open this file. I made my Ladies Boogie gift from a piece of uh, using Imgur's uh, tool to generate an a gift from a file. I found this loop of these two women dancing. And um, you'll see that this GIF is made of 12 layers and now 12 frames. Now, if you don't see frames, um, in what's called the timeline, you can have the timeline made visible by checking window and bringing up timeline, all right? And so that makes the timeline visible. And so what you'll see is <coughs> each frame is showing a different layer. And this is a nice, easy one-to-one. -one. So frame four is showing layer four. Frame five, layer five. And we can hit play. And it's a little slower. One of the things that's a bummer about Photoshop is the timing that it plays back at is not accurate. All right? So we know this is actually faster just by seeing it on the web. Um, <coughs> so when we open it, we can see it's actually much faster, right? So you got to be a little leery of uh, the timing in Photoshop and make estimations, all right? So the first thing is we can slow it down. So you can see each frame has a, a number of seconds associated with 0 0.04 seconds or four hundredths of a second per frame. So each frame is displayed for four hundredths of a second, but you can you can change that to whatever you want. You can change them globally by uh, selecting the first frame, holding down the shift key and selecting the last frame, and then clicking on any of the triangles next to it. And I can change it to say 0.1 seconds. And now uh, it, it's gonna show even much slower in Photoshop, but it should be about twice as slow uh, than what we saw. And so I'm gonna uh, save this for the web. So we say save for the web. Um, and ugh, let's ignore all this stuff for now. Let's make its default. Um, GIFs have a lot of settings. Let's pull this up so we can see everything. Uh, Save for the web is, is a way of working, making sure it's compliant with web standards. The GIF palette, there's a number of things. This is where you could pick a JPEG, PNG, um, a WBMP, which you won't use that very often, but GIFs and JPEGs you'll generate all the time. Um, you can see you could change it, uh, the looping options from forever to once, but we're going to keep it forever because that's what we want. Um, the big thing is these are types of dither. Dither is the dots that it generates. If no dither, you're going to see more splotchy coloring, but it's a trade-off in terms of the size of the file. All right, You have to kind of monitor file size. Um, so it's not that discernible between the two, but the size is also uh, about one and a half megabytes. You can also change the number of colors. This will also affect the file size. So I'm using fewer colors, and you can see it's correspondingly, uh, you're changing it a little slightly. This is where you make something to your taste. You also can do things that are deliberate. So if I go really low, 16, it's surprising how it still looks natural with so few colors, right? Um, and now the file size is um, only almost a half, a, basically a half a megabyte. Um, but you can go all the way down to four, and it looks like basically uh, uh, a duotone. Like it's 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 like it's finally losing its its uh, most of its colors. But the funny thing is, you actually can change colors. So you see this this main uh, skin tone, which is either this color or this color, one of the two. It's a combination of the two. Let's, I can make these, these people look pink, all right? So I'm going to make this 
flesh tone color uh, one pink. Now I'm going to make this color a little bit lighter pink. Well, let's start with one. So if I double click on it, I technically can choose a different color. All right, and I can pick a pink, and I say okay, and now it's 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 that's one pink. So I guessed wrong. So I want to use this color. So you can monitor these, and you can do some crazy stuff, and really change the look of the image based on whatever you want. So I'm just progressively choosing darker pinks. <laughs> it's getting a little crazy. You into a, let's make it a red. All right. Um, and it's it's looking a little funky, right? So you can play with colors and do custom colors if you wish to uh, with varying effects. And that's what I showed. Uh, I'll show you the example. But if you're looking for a naturalistic look, let's just stick with that. Um, and this is the, uh, we'll say it's the slower version. All right. And now we open this, uh, the slower version. You can see it left some of the pink in there. That's funny. Um, so you have to reset those colors, which I didn't. But it's that versus there's the original, right? Now, the other thing that you can do is it's very easy to reset the let's say you want to have something loop back and forth so the idea is when you're playing it's going 1 through 12 <coughs> 1 through 12 1 through 12 but the reality is let's say you want it to go 1 through 12 then back 12 to 1 right like you want to go forward and back and forward and back and forward and back right so to do that that what that really means is i need to take these frames in between the first one and the last one and reverse them so it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, then 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and you end on 2 because then it circles around and goes back to 1. All right? So you can use the timeline has its own palette. We can say copy these frames, the ones in between the first one and the last one. Then I say paste the frames after the last one. You have to select the last one first and then paste it after, we say after, and it doesn't keep them 11 through, uh, 2 through 11, it, it just you know adds frames, but you know you have to reverse them. We have to reverse those frames, because right now it's 2 through 11, it's not reversed 11 through 12. So we reverse them, and now as we watch, they're going back and forth. And you can say like, you can make choices. Now I can see that she seems to go bump bump with her shoulder, right shoulder, and I don't, let's say I don't like that. So you, you, ha you can work on the timing, so we can say it goes down, she goes up, and you can see she goes back and forth, it seems, right? And so I can trash that frame. There's a little trash can right here. Let's give this up a teeny bit. There's a little trash can in the palette, and so I can delete that frame. So now as we pass through, so it's there and there. And let's see if that's a little bit better. Still there. Up. There's, that comes back, so let's delete that one. Let's try that. That's a little better, right? So now we've created this, this loop that's based on a forward and back approach. And again, we can save this. <coughs> um, and I need to fix my colors here. putting them back to the default so we get rid of those pinks. That previous point. 
All right, so all the pink's gone. Um, it's a, now it's gotten bigger because there's more frames. It added a megabyte to the size of the image. Um, and we say uh, forward and back. All right, and so now we're, we're looping with some changing it in tempor uh, temporary. Now, you can get crazy. Like, I can get sloppy, and I can intentionally just start moving frames around. I can grab two and put them over here, and I can grab two and put them over here, and I can grab one and put it over here, and make it seem like it's really out of whack um, for the sake of just experimenting and see what happens. And you can see all these, like, crazy motions that results out of it, right? So you can work with uh, the temporal nature of the image of the animation itself to create all sorts of effects. Like don't feel, it's, it is an opportunity. And then the other things you can do is you can um, make things different times. So And so now I have all these distortions, but I also have these time uh, per frame changes, and I'll make some of these other ones faster, and I can select other, and I'll say 0 0.04. So now I'm, I'm not just doing a classic video loop, I'm just doing all these, these little bits of remix to, to kind of create this little bit of uh, uh, visual chaoticness, or uh, maybe it's lending, trending towards what people call uh, glitch art. Um, and so let's see what this looks like. Uh, this is uh, um, re-sequenced and uh, re-timed, right? So it's a little bit all over the place. And so now you have this kind of disjointed, weird, and then you could just keep experimenting until you see something that's interesting to you. Like there's no right or wrong. There is the obvious, like simple, yeah, let's, let's loop the image, right? And that's great and can be very satisfying and this is how you make a reaction GIF and there's nothing wrong with it. But then there's that, okay, we can slow it down. We can loop it back and forth and we actually tossed out a couple frames, and then we can really just start playing with timing and lengths and, and see what that does to the animation. All right? And uh, that's it. And let's... Uh